Well, there's two ways you look at that. It's either a gift or a curse. That's the kind of introduction people give with anything that's dramatic or sensational or wild. You gotta remember, it's got its good side and its bad side. There's two sides to every coin. You know, it's got its positives and its negatives. And then we forget about that as we go along with our tales. But heads up, because I realized at a young age, or at least I was made aware of, I didn't realize until recently that I was aware of then at a young age, that I was being exposed to things that were a little more unusual than other people were seeing. Now, how did I confirm that? Well, one was what they were telling me, and two was when I was telling them stories or uh, explaining why things had happened or what had happened to me, the look on their face of disbelief and the, the repetitive uh, reaction of people that what I was telling them, regardless of what the topic was, seemed to indicate to me, because I did the math, that something was going on around me or, or focused on my life that put me in positions where either I was seeing these things incorrectly, um, which I never, I never believed or was citing on that side, um, but I, I don't think I ever thought of it, of it as being unique. I mean, I don't think I, I ever saw it as uh, I'm special in a good or bad way. Uh, only I am seeing these things. Now, am I saying that's the, the result I'm coming up with now? No, because I think now I understand some people that are looked down upon as being nuts or crazy. Uh, at the same time, disappointed with some where I thought, wow, now I know so-and-so has been telling the truth only to investigate and find out, whoops. Um, you know, I assumed because of what I discovered that when you use these catch, uh, you know, or buzzwords like a conspiracy theorist, uh, truther, just like you do, uh, he's crazy or he's on drugs, that that automatically was going to mean all of those people were telling the truth. Um, and I was disappointed to see some were not. But there are those rare occasions where I think basically – People have been so beat down with um, not the events that they witness or the experiences that they go through, um, but trying to and, and, and having a need to talk to someone about it, um, that they just simply go into a lockdown mode. And, you know, just like in a relationship, when you're not looking for it, you find it. And it does seem to be that right when you start giving up and, and, and thinking and very seriously thinking, you know. Um, it, it realizing really that you know, as, as a friend of mine said the other day, uh, we were talking about relationships, and um, someone was saying, you know, I would never do that. You know, you know, I don't understand why people cheat, and on and on. And he said, you know, it's it's really frightening to hear you say that because you're aware that every single person who has done it has said that. And I said Ex exactly. I said exactly. I don't think there's ever been an instance where. The person that has gone through the experience or has seen something or did something hasn't ironically at some point before that. It's as if they cursed themselves, had said they weren't going to be that way. I don't do that. I don't do this. And then it's as if they cursed themselves and then did. And that really frightens people who haven't done those things. You realize you're in a huge minority. You don't even believe that anyone else exists that can be in that position. You may be saying, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, you're always saying what the hell are you talking about. That's a very difficult position to be in with everything. And sometimes it's weird and it's very strange to even me. Now, the only glory I ever get out of this is never someone saying, I believe you, which is what I tell them. You know, I get to play that role and I love it. When I find people, as they say, that will be lined up for me, you just knock them down. And what that means is, they just seem to come to me and sit next to me on a bus or talk to me in a store and I'll just know right then and there. <laughs> this person's not asking me about where the rice is or they think they are. I need to investigate here and next thing you know, they'll bring up a topic that'll ring a bell and we're talking about their daughter who passed away two days ago. You know, so how I get sent on that, those kinds of missions, I don't really, you know, look too far into it, how that's all controlled because it does – give you this sense of having no real will because you're like, how did I time, how did I get timed to be here? And that person got timed. There must be some form of mental control. 
that goes on, or as I put it, moving of the chess pieces so that this event can happen. But there are angels out there. Call them what you will. Uh, people say, well, angels are aliens. I'd rather say they're extraterrestrials because, as a man said, by definition, angels are not from this world, so they are extraterrestrial. Aliens seem to indi indicate either you're Latino, um, which is ridiculous if they even use the term illegal alien for <laughs> what's more common to see around here than white people. But the term alien, they make it sound so scary. And um, so when I think of alien, I think of like the little green men with the laser guns that are going to kill us. When I think of extraterrestrial, I think of a myriad of different higher intelligence beings that probably live out in our galaxy. And I'm convinced that the archangels do exist, probably under different names and terms, but the concept, the metaphor of them is very real. Probably everything in the Bible, in the Torah, in the Quran, all of those elements from Jesus Christ to Judas to the devil does exist out there in one form or another and is being described to us in those texts so that we can recognize it when it happens. But that's just an observation. That sometimes I get really good things to observe. I put in unique positions of witnessing high strangeness. And it feels really, really good when basically someone has witnessed it happen. And it's funny how that happens too. Because I get so tired of trying to explain to people what I'm seeing and what I'm knowing that it's, again, right when I drop my my weapon and I'm just like, I give up, I give up. Whatever it is I'm trying to explain to them, whether it's about how I might see something strange or where things are happening around me, something will happen in the presence of the individual. And my reaction will be what it usually is, which is whatever. Because I've, I've now forgotten I'm wanting this to happen so that they can see it for once. They can believe me. And what happens in that ironic twist is my reaction to the event, when they look at me like, oh my God, did you see that? My reaction is usually so blase, like, yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you about. Anyways, let's go. That confirms for them that I'm telling the truth. I don't do it intentionally. But when they see I'm so blase about what they just saw being so stunning, and then they put together, not only was he blase about it, but that's the thing he's been talking about that's been happening. That's why he was so, holy crap, you were telling the truth. I'm sorry, but I just cannot get fixated yet on this idea that don't worry about pushing the idea that you are telling the truth and other people need to know it. I think it's important on many levels. You're looking at it from a point of, I need it for myself. I need to hear it. That's just the candy coating that makes me do it. Because I realize at this point, some of the things I'm exposed to, if I can prove those things, the bonus is that they'll believe me. The lesson in what it is that I saw and that they accept a reality of that, or that there may be a reality of that, opens up a door that is changing their lives. So that's the goal of, will people believe you or not? And that should be the truth with everything. Whether it's uh, believing the minorities when they're, they're in the ghettos and they see white cops are beating them down, and then you think Rodney King is the first incident that happened? See, I see things like that, and I realize, holy shit, this is way worse than we thought. They got lucky to catch it on camera. But in your mindset, I bet you're thinking, that was a terrible incident that got caught on camera. No, that was one of the incidents that got caught on camera out of thousands. And you don't look at things that way. 9-11, oh my God, it was an inside job. Bush Cheney, I'm thinking, oh my God, what? They're blaming the Muslims. They're attacking another religion for that. You guys look at shit in a totally different way than I do. And it, maybe that's why I get exposed to different things than you do. I did read a quote once, which I'm not sure what it means, but... It, it seemed to imply that God or whoever controls the big show, because that was like a tell good stories, <laughs> but it said that there seems to be an element of bizarre and strange things happening around those who will tell the best stories. What I think it is with me is these things happen to me because I'll be honest and tell you about them. You guys don't talk about it. I do. I talk about it. I will tell people what I saw. So you're saying that what? You get exposed to these things that are more unusual because most people can't handle it or wouldn't talk about it out of embarrassment. But because you would say something, you were put in the position to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Because it gets weird. <laughs> Very weird. Okay. I'm really Trust sorry. Me. I am. I'm sorry. Are you really? Yes. You gotta stop. Oh. Please. Just. Just so you don't hate me. Eleanor, I never, I don't hate you. I never hated you. I want you to stop the phone call. They're not good for you. They're not good for me. Well, so are you going to stop them? I will. I 
Arthur, I'll do anything you want me to. I know I've been making a lot of trouble for you, and I know, I know you didn't take Wendy, and you didn't take Diane. I know that. He wouldn't do that. I know it. I know it. I'm sorry. Donna, will you stop it? Stop what? There is no Wendy. There is no Diane. Arthur. They don't exist. How can you say that? How can you? I can say it because it's true. Now just stop it. Stop all of it. Stop calling me. Forget about Wendy and Diane. You made them up. And you stop trying to drive me crazy. I don't have to drive you crazy. You are crazy. I'm now not. Say it to me. Say it to me. Arthur, there is no Wendy. There is no Diane. Say it. No. 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 There no. is no Wendy. There is no Diane. There I made is. them up. Say it. It's a lie, and I'm not going to say it. Not for you or anybody else. Goodbye, Ellen. Speak to Arthur, please. Eleanor. Eleanor, this has got to stop. I mean, uh, this can't go on. Surely you're aware of that. May I speak to Arthur, please? Eleanor. Listen, I understand what you are going through, but what you've got to know is that it's not working. None of what you are doing is working. May I speak to Arthur, please? Okay. She has her job and I, I can cook, cook nice, nice things.